Ag Week TV, presented by Peterson Farm Seed. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Shauna Olson. The sugar beet industry is coming off a great year. High yields, good prices, and a quick harvest. But there are some clouds on the horizon. The two big beet growers in the region, American Crystal and Mindac Farmers Cooperative, recently held their annual shareholder meetings. Ag Week's Mikkel Repates was there and has more on the main concerns. With 2015 record yields in the bag, American Crystal and Mindac are forging ahead, trying to stay competitive in a world of tough competitors. It was a life and death problem. The 2015 crop marketing season will be better than last year because of a successful conclusion to the Mexican trade case last October. Sugar prices are better because the Mexico trade problem is fixed. So the shareholders are immensely relieved about that. David Berg said beet growers have won some key trade battles in 2015, but face increasing pressure from consumers over GMO crops, including Roundup Ready beets. Hershey is, is, was probably the first company to do this. They are not purchasing beet sugar. They're only buying cane sugar because it is, cane is not genetically modified. Uh, there are other companies that are making inquiries about this. Sucrose, whether it's sugar beet or sugar cane sugar, is 99.9996% pure. There is no trace of the plant being genetically modified in the sugar, but nonetheless, that customer says that they don't want to buy beet sugar anymore. Every beet sugar factory in the U.S. has had their sugar tested by a company called Eurofins. And that sugar that comes out of our factories is no different than the sugar that comes from cane. Beet growers don't want to think about farming without Roundup Ready beets, but the anti-GMO rhetoric is changing that. They really don't want to have to go back to what I would call old technology. So we're taking it seriously. Uh, we think the threat is, is real. We don't know how big it is. That is a concern for the shareholders. They want to continue to raise Roundup Ready sugar beets. We're going to do everything we can to let them keep raising them, but, but we, we also have to satisfy the market uh, that we can sell to. We frankly can't convert very soon because the seed doesn't exist. If the seed is available in a few years, what's the right economic package that we could make so that our growers would say, this is okay, I will do this. We're looking at this as something in probably three to five years we'll know for sure. How dire is it? Or are we actually moving the needle and changing consumer attitudes towards realizing that sugar from Roundup Ready Beets is the same as sugar from cane? Despite excellent yields and a quick clean harvest, American Crystal ran into some problems that they didn't expect this year. One of the reasons that the harvest was rapid is that beets were dry. There was no mud in the fields. But a dry beet may be a little bit stressed, and right now they're, they're not in perfect condition in the pile. So that means that our, our sugar recovery is not quite where we want it to be. So what it comes down to is that if, if the beets continue to be in this challenged condition, they're not rotten, they're not spoiling, we're not hauling them out back into the fields but they're not in perfect shape either. If they continue in that condition for the rest of the entire processing season into May, uh, there, there will be a negative impact on this year's beet payment. This is Mikkel Pates with Ag Week TV. Berg says about five or six piles of the beets were extremely dry. He says they've never experienced beets in that kind of shape in the past. The sugar industry is also bracing for more restrictions on dietary sugar. Very soon, the USDA and the Department of Health and Human Services will be releasing their 2015 dietary guidelines. It's expected to cut the daily recommendation of sugar from 13% of calories to 10%. Courtney Gain, Vice President of Scientific Affairs for the Sugar Association in Washington, D.C., spoke at the Mindac Farmers meeting. She warned there's an increasing and rapid trend toward the restriction of sugar in food guidelines, but she says it's not always driven by science. Currently, we are in a, an environment where decisions are being made in, in hopes that the science will follow. And it's more of a, a public health approach where if there's a little science affecting a small part of the population, let's use that versus using clinical trials and more of the standard high level of evidence that's used to prove cause and effect. Um, so it's political, highly political, but everything is. The dietary guidelines come out every five years. Dropping added sugars to 10% could equate to 2 million tons of decreased sugar used a year.